All right, this is Grade 4, Module 4, Lesson 15, and we're going to be classifying quadrilaterals based on parallel and perpendicular lines in the presence or absence of angles of a speci specified size. And basically, what this means is, so often in traditional textbooks, kids are just said, are told, okay, this is a square, memorize it. This is a rectangle, good, memorize it. This is a parallelogram, good, memorize it. And they just kind of, it's meaningless to the kids. And then, and then we go and, and we make it even more complicated by saying things like, well, all squares are rectangles, but not all rectangles are squares. <laughs> and the kids are like, what? I don't understand what any of this means. And so the whole point of this lesson is to really get students thinking deep about the meanings and the definitions of these shapes and just interacting with them on a really meaningful level instead of just simply trying to memorize the various definitions of these figures. So let's get started. So first we're going to do a little bit of practice. It says, use the word bank to name each shape, being as specific as possible. And that's the idea of, well, sometimes some figures could have two different names. We could classify the same figure in more than one way. But we're going to try and be as specific as possible. So, let's get started with this. And I'm going to look here. And I know that a parallelogram has two sets of parallel lines. Trapezoid has only one, generally. There are um, other ways to define trapezoids where you could say a trapezoid is a figure with exactly one pair of parallel lines, whereas other textbooks will say a trapezoid is um, a quadrilateral with at least one pair of um, parallel lines. So it's kind of uh, tricky, and it's not quite as cut and dry as you would think about the word trapezoid. Rectangle, two pairs of parallel lines, just like a parallelogram, only now we're going to throw in the fact that it's got to have 90 degree angles. Similarly with a square, it's got to have two, parallel, two pairs of parallel lines, just like a parallelogram, and it's got to have 90 degree angles, just like a rectangle, but now all four sides have to be the same length, all right? And so let's get going on this. So I look at this figure, I see that it's got one pair of parallel lines. These are not parallel at all. So that means it can't be a parallelogram or a rectangle or a square. So by process of elimination, it is a trapezoid. And sure enough, it is. It's a trapezoid. This figure, I see that we've got two pairs of parallel lines. So that tells us it could be a parallelogram, a rectangle, or a square. Could be any one of these three, except no 90 degree angles. Since they're not 90 degree angles, it can't be a rectangle or a square. And in fact, well, yeah, and so it's got to be a parallelogram. There is our parallelogram. All right. And then let's look at this figure. Wow, this one's classic. We've known this since, oh, kindergarten. That is definitely a square. And just in case, you're not sure. Four equal sides, four 90 degree angles, two sets of parallel lines. So it's definitely a square. And by a process of elimination, we can see that this last figure is a rectangle. Um, but more than that, let's think about this. Well, it's got the 90 degree angles, so it can either be a rectangle or a square, but not all four sides are the same length like a square. We've got two congruent lengths and two congruent lengths, so it is a rectangle. Now here we're, we're given a task. We're told to construct the following figures based on the given attributes and then name it. All right, so it says it's got to be a quadrilateral, so that means it's got to have four sides. And then it says two sets of parallel sides. All right, so one idea, there's my rectangle. So I've satisfied the four sides, and I'm going to show that this side is parallel with this side, and I'm going to show that this side is parallel with this side. So there you go, I've, I've built a rectangle. 
but a rectangle is not the only answer. So teachers, parents, you may have some high-flying students, creative-minded people who come up with a parallelogram because, hey, we've got four sides and we have our two sides, two pairs, or two sets of parallel lines. So it could be a parallelogram. And students might even come up with a third option. And I'm going to leave it up to you to figure out what that third option might be. And that wraps up Lesson 15 from Grade 4, Module 4, where we are classifying quadrilaterals based on parallel, perpendicular lines, and all that sort of stuff.